Hello and welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. Today we're going to be doing a double unboxing video. So two very similar cars, the Tamiya 1966 Volkswagen 1300 Beetle and, and the Revell VW Beetle Cabriolet 1970. Both of these kits are 124 and I figured since they're so similar I would unbox them together. Before we start don't forget to click subscribe and the bell button to stay notified. So firstly the Tamiya you can see in here this is a brand new kit although I have already been looking around in here a little bit. The body, large white sprue, instructions, chrome sprue, black sprue and tires and a clear sprue and then instructions. So firstly here we look at the instructions. It says, even in this age of sophistication the popularity of the Volkswagen Beetle has not diminished. It dates back to the 1930s where doc when Dr. Ferdinand Porsche provided the design framework for the people's car. Today with more than 20 million units produced the Volkswagen Beetle has become a symbol of mass produced motorization with no other vehicle exceeding this figure. Built upon the sturdy platform chassis is the amazingly reliable air-cooled flat four-cylinder engine. Suspension is four-wheel independent for crisp handling and driving comfort. Although the onset of the Second World War greatly hindered Volkswagen's marketing opportunities, it made a superb comeback shortly following the conflict under the skillful guidance of Heinrich Nordhoff. Throughout its production life, the Volkswagen was continually improved to meet modern automobile standards. An enlarged power plant displacement and better visibility are two of the notable changes that enabled the Beetle to set standards for the compact car market. The 1966 Volkswagen model is regarded as the classic Beetle, one that retains most of the original design traits and has become a collector's item. Even today, more than half a century later, watching a nimble street bug is still a pleasant sight to behold and its unmistakable shape will sure likely delight generations to come. If we look inside, you can see that um, unusually for a Tamiya kit, you've got a full engine. It's on to there. And then the interior, just left hand drive this one. Suggestions for different colours up here. More and onto the back. And then the spare tire, more exterior parts. And then there. Unusually, this is the first kit that I've ever come across which has no decals whatsoever. Instead, it has a rather small uh, sheet of metal transfers and that is it. Just a simple VW badge and the 1300 symbol. Which I really hope I don't lose. Maybe wondering if there's no decals what exactly is supposed to go on the number plates. Well as hopefully you can see here there are little embossed Volkswagen uh, badges and wording on the number plates and there are also those on the mudguards. Okay, so, so here's the first sprue, this white one. And got tyres, and poly caps there. The clear sprue. Chrome sprue. I think I've already removed one of the headlight houses here. Really like those um, those hubcaps. And finally, this black sprue. And then, of course, the body. mold lines there at the top. Okay. And of course then we've got the Revell 
It says here, this is uh, the Beetle 1500 convertible 1970. From the outset, drivers like to feel the wind in their faces. The first cars were nothing but open coaches without horses. And in the early years of the 20th century, convertibles were the most prestigious versions built by the motor manufacturers. The legendary Beetle was no exception. Right at the prototype stage in the 1930s, there were convertible versions, and when production carried on in 1948, it was clear that an open-top version was needed. However, Volkswagen themselves did not build this convertible, but transferred production to the bodywork firm Hebmuller in Wulfrath and Carmen in Onsebruck. I might be mispronouncing those, I'm sorry to any Germans who are listening, for a design with a platform on which each of the angles and engine were constructed, very different bodies were offered. From 1949 to 52, Hebmuller built an elegant two-seat version with independent bodywork until the firm ran into financial problems due to a fire in the works. Carmen, on the other hand, used an original bodywork of the saloons, removed the roof, and in 1949, a convertible that could carry four passengers went into production. In the following years, Carmen always built their convertibles to the standard of the Wolfsburg saloons. When the version with its capacity increased to 44 horsepower, 1500 cc came on the market in 1966. Carmen produced open-top versions. In 1968, this, nine, this VW 1500 received square-shaped taillights, the squared-off Europa bumpers, affectionately known as railway lines, and vertical headlamps. The car remained almost unchanged until production ceased in 1970. The top speed was 125 km per hour, with a petrol consumption of 8.8 .8 litres per 100 km. So then if we look through the instructions, <coughs> so all the safety stuff, there are the parts and the colours recommended, and the instructions, this has got an engine as well. Here. The, the interior. See here that they want to drill in different places depending on whether it's left hand drive or right hand drive. Other steps. And there you can see. Left hand drive and right hand drive dashboards, other features. No spare tire on this one. for the optional roof, which is quite a nice feature. It's got two styles of roof. And then on the back, the decal instructions. Okay, so we'll look inside. So this has got a lot more parts than the Tamiya version. You can see here, got a couple of grey sprues. There. Another grey sprue. Small white sprue here, which got door cards and the uh, optional roof. Quite nice to make that, and then you can add it or take it away. And we've got um, another white sprue here. And this has also got, oh yeah, it goes there, doesn't it? This has got um, the dashboards, bonnet, seats like that and in fact sorry the uh, engine cover there I, I removed it and also this um, kind of folded roof section here it comes as a completely separate part and whether that was added later when they realized they needed it and we've got a clear sprue here smaller than the clear sprue on the Tamiya by a little bit. Windows, headlights, that sort of thing. Then we've got a couple of chrome. 
Iron Spruce, so two. This is stuck. <laughs> yeah, so there's bumpers, tail light housing, I think that's a rear view mirror. And then another chrome sprue here, um, which has got windscreen wipers, um, wheels, side runners, things like that. Oh, sorry, these are the tyres, very similar, but only four this time. No poly caps, so Ravel don't really go for poly caps. And unlike the other one, this has got quite an extensive decal sheet. As you can see there, number plates from several different countries, um, the chrome strips there, um, yeah, so a lot there uh, as opposed to the other one. So a lot more variation with this one. I think this is a relatively recent tooling, I think 2013 I read. Um, and then of course here we've got the body. Now one thing I find nice about this is that these are both 124 and they're exactly the same size as you can see there. Um, so what I'm actually planning to do is uh, to swap around some of these parts and I'm going to try and use uh, some of the parts from this one to turn this one into right hand drive. Um, so we'll see how that goes, hopefully it'll work. Um, but uh, yeah, very interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you soon.